T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. And liftoff. Godspeed, one Endeavour, alpha. and Crew 2. Copy, 1 Alpha. Vehicle stitching down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Mission and liftoff. Got speed endeavor and crew two. Copy one alpha. Endeavour launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on Crew 2, now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on the first stage performance so far. seconds into the second rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will be throttling down the nine Merlin engines shortly here in preparation for in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And there's that call out for the throttle down. Maximum dynamic pressure, max Q, is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. So throttling down does help us pass. Supersonic. Throttling down helps us pass through this period, which should be coming here shortly. Max Q. There's that call out that we have just passed through max Q. Stage one, throttle up. And one, we can bravo. Now... Copy, one, bravo. All right, one Bravo is the second abort mode on the first stage. The first stage continues to fire for two minutes, 35 seconds, one and a half minutes into today's flight. Falcon 9 now traveling at more than 1,500 miles an hour. MVAC engine chill has started. All right, the engine chill for the second stage single Merlin engine has started. About 30 more seconds of the first stage firing to bring our four astronauts into orbit. Now from here coming up in about 20 some seconds, we're going to have three major milestones. We'll have shutdown of the nine Merlin engines. We're beginning to throttle them down. We will then get stage, stage separation, one, throttle down. and then we will get ignition of the second stage engine to propel Dragon and the Falcon 9 second stage into orbit. Two hey, Alpha. Nico. Copy, two Alpha. Confirmed. That okay, you were just seeing history being made. Uh, NASA SpaceX Crew 2 lifting off uh, with four astronauts on board. Uh, there you can see the capsule separating. I'd like to bring in uh, Frederick Castell, aerospace journalist. What are we seeing exactly on our screens right now? We just just the, the 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 use of the first stage and separation of first stage, which is on the left screen, about to um, to rush back to, f to land later on uh, back to Florida. And on the right, we see the upper part of the rocket, the second stage, with the capsule still going on ascent. We are during the eight critical minutes to reach orbit. Okay, fair. It's reaching the speed of 28,000 kilometers per hour in eight, uh, eight to nine minutes. So it's um, it's critical, critical time. Okay, critical time. Uh, fascinating indeed. I'd like to go across to France 24th, Ketevan Gorgeous Sunny on the ground uh, in Cape uh, Canaveral. Ketevan, you know, you've covered a lot of stories for us, uh, protests, presidents, what have you. What was it like to witness this? Copy, 
Honestly, it was uh, incredible. And uh, it's really an amazing thing to have witnessed. I've obviously never uh, done a uh, space launch uh, before and uh, standing here uh, when uh, that uh, that rocket lifted off and uh, this uh, really this big ball of fire just illuminated the sky uh, it looked like uh, really like the sun was rising at an incredible speed and all of a sudden it was almost daylight uh, here at uh, Cape Canaveral and it's uh, really uh, crazy to think that uh, those four astronauts are now uh, deep in uh, going into space to the International Space Station, but uh, I could actually feel the vibrations, feel uh, and hear the sound of uh, that Falcon 9 uh, rocket, even though I'm standing about uh, four to five uh, kilometers from uh, that launch pad. So it was uh, really amazing to uh, to witness and uh, and see this uh, rocket launching into the sky and uh, really that, that flame following it all uh, the way up into uh, the atmosphere. I'd like to bring in Laura Andre Boyer, who trained Thomas Pesquet at the European Space Agency. I hope you're here, still with us here on France 24. What is going through somebody's minds right now, you know, a few minutes after liftoff? Um, yes, I'm still here. This is a hard question to answer. I've never been myself in, the, in this situation. Um, I can only imagine. I think uh, I think the crew right now is uh, extremely focused, uh, and uh, and that they're simply following uh, the standard procedures. You know, a couple of months ago, the European Space Agency launched a recruitment drive encouraging more women to apply. What, in your opinion, has kept women away f from space? I think that's, um, that's a global problem. Uh, I think we uh, maybe uh, have general issues regarding the, the uh, studies that women uh, decide to endorse and, uh, and uh, many other issues uh, of legitimacy, for instance. Um, but I think we are in the really right direction to change this very soon. And for sure, with the, uh, with the current selection uh, that is actually finishing at the end of May, uh, we are hoping to have many more women applying. Okay. Uh, Frederick Cassel, uh, you know, the European Space Agency wants to to attract more women. I spoke to the, uh, as I was telling you, the head of the European Space Agency yesterday, and he, he actually looked into the camera and he encouraged more women to apply. Uh, how important is it for the ESA to keep up with the times? Because predominantly men have, have been, you know, going into space. Uh, that has to do with the history of space program. Of course, in, uh, at the beginning, or only men. We see only men working on the moon. But then uh, NASA tried to improve. But then you have to have a whole generation and sometimes two generations. Because usually we, do, we just see that not only in space, but uh, science and technology is not always the prior was not at least the priority for the education system worldwide. And now is improving. And we see, of course, that women have the, exactly the same capabilities but the culture has to change and it's a very slow process and of course now we see more and more and uh, uh, the mission the first mission to the moon in a few years with the Artemis program will bring uh, will bring a woman uh, on the south pole of the moon uh, Ketevan, talk us with the four astronauts who who have just lifted off uh, towards the International Space Agency Well, it's a very international uh, crew uh, because uh, there are three uh, different agencies that are represented. There's, of course, uh, NASA with the two Americans, Shane Kimbrough and uh, Megan uh, MacArthur. There's also Aki Oshide, who uh, represents the Japanese Space Agency. And, of course, the Frenchman, uh, Thomas Pesquet, who uh, is from the European Space Agency. Uh, four uh, extremely uh, experienced uh, astronauts, uh, some of them have already worked uh, together uh, and uh, they have also been training together for the past a couple of years preparing for uh, this launch that we uh, just saw uh, Thomas Pesquet of course uh, becoming the first European to uh, fly on a SpaceX uh, mission uh, Thomas Pesquet who had already been to the International uh, Space Station back in 2016 2017 uh, but he had uh, launched there with uh, the Soyuz so this is his first 
trip uh, on uh, SpaceX. And Thomas Pesquet will actually uh, get to be commander at some point uh, during his stay in uh, the ISS uh, at uh, the very end, uh, probably the final month of uh, that six month uh, period. Before that, it will be uh, Aki Oshide who uh, will be the commander of that international space station. So uh, this uh, partnership also, uh, we talked about uh, the partnership between SpaceX and, and NASA, but this partnership also uh, between uh, the Europeans, the Japanese, and uh, the Americans is also something uh, that is uh, seen as very important, at least uh, from the people I talked to. Uh, the uh, Europeans are also very uh, happy to be part of this mission. And Thomas Pesquet actually uh, talked about it, saying that this was uh, great for uh, the Europeans. Europeans, given that they have, uh, they are a smaller uh, by comparison to uh, the Russian and uh, the American space programs, and so uh, this uh, th this joint effort and uh, this uh, crew of uh, three different space agencies is uh, is a pretty uh, unique.